Greetings. Welcome back, everyone. We are here for our second part in our Masters of the Nativity section. So we're here today to talk about the triplicity lords of the sectoid. I am again joined, thankfully and gratefully, by David Fisher. Hey, David. Hey. And Matt Nolan. Thank you both Hello. for being here. All right, so we're going to go through our little pod on, um, you know, we're doing this book study club. You guys know that these are companions to the book study club that we do on Patreon. Um, we are towards the end of the book, but these last sessions are going to be hot. So if you guys wanted to jump in for like length of life technique, we have a few more sessions up until around the solstice. Feel free to join us for the last part of the book. There's some cool stuff going on there. And then um, we will be starting on the Firmicus Maternus at the new year. We're still going to release like what date that is, but that's like a save the date moment for you all, which is going to be awesome. So, okay. And I'm not going to be there. Yeah. David. We're breaking up with David. He's not good at this. Yes. No, I'm just... sailing away to another <laughs> opportunity. Yeah. Well, I guess this is our public announcement. David, do you I am not going to be with you guys after the end of July. I think my last, this is my last video. I, yeah, this is my last video that I'm recording with you guys before. It is not happens. the last. It is a pause. David will be back. Always a friend yes. of the channel. Um, David has some adventures and it might be a little spotty with like internet connection, but David will be joining us whenever open invitation, whenever he can. But there is going to be a little pause seeing his beautiful face. <laughs> anyway, everyone blast David through the ethers with super good vibes for his next travel adventure. And it's really special to have you here today. Okay. Shall we begin? Triplicity Lords of the Sectlight. So um, this is another category that gets like a master of the nativity. I wanted to say also that like, Valens and Dorotheus have big parts. I think Demetra was giving them as being her like ultimate resources on the Triple City Lords in this chapter. So if you want, you can go to Valens and Dorotheus for that. Um, and they're basically both saying in their own way, I mean, there's different techniques on how they treat it and things like this, but it's your overall kind of like happiness or your overall life support is how you can kind of look at the triplicity lords and we'll get a little bit deeper into all of this but th but that is why it's like a master of the nativity it's looking along with the other masters of the nativity at like a general life theme a support theme a happiness theme a fulfillment like how likely are we to really get there and I think it was Valens who said if and we'll talk about the conditions, but if the triplicity lords are kind of wonky, he then tells you to look at the Lord of Fortune. So, you know, keep this in mind again as a disclaimer, like we did in the last video, we're not just looking just at these or just at the other masters in the nativity. You have to establish them, establish their condition, and then look at them together with the, uh, uh, as, as a whole for the, for the life, for the nativity. So let's jump in. We're going to go over the summary. I have a lot highlighted here and it is going to be a fun study session because I think it's really, it'll be really great to look at everyone's charts and sort of identify them and talk about them. The triplicity lords are, you know, trigon lords, which I prefer. I would like to um, just note that I think that we should move towards the language of trigon lords versus triplicity lords. So if you hear me going back and forth, I, I kind of like want to normalize that term in my language. So the trigon lords have to do with the elements. They were the winds. They were associated with the winds. And then we moved towards the elements. So you're looking at this. This is like an element technique. So earth, air, fire, water. That's what you're looking at. You're looking at also sect. So you're looking at what is the element and then what is the sect. And that's going to be like your primary place to start when looking at the triplicity lords. There is a table, but it's also worth 
memorizing. And one thing that I didn't realize when I started that Demetra makes clear in the book is that you're going to take the primary triplicity lord by day, and then the other sect light becomes your second ruler, the lord of the second sect light. So, okay, say you have a day chart and the triplicity, say it's fire, the triplicity lord of fire is the sun, okay? By night, the triplicity lord is Jupiter. That's why in a day chart, we have sun as the first ruler and then Jupiter as the second ruler. In a night chart, it's going to be Jupiter, then the sun. So you're actually taking the Lord by day is the primary ruler, and then the Lord by night is the secondary ruler of the sect lights. Was that too confusing? <laughs> Um, no, I don't think so. The, you know, the way that I like to think of it is sort of like also saying before, all of these rulers have to do with um, support generally for the life. And so the language around the triplicity lords of the sect light is how luminous is the life, how bright is the life, how eminent is the life, how well supported by the triplicity lords is the power of the main light. That's going to be the sun by day and the moon by night. So the way that I like to think of this basically is that what we're looking at with this technique, like all the masters, rulers of the nativity are going to give you a notion of the general support of the life. And so the specific um, language or like image that you want to think of for the triplicity or trigon rulers of the sect light is how well supported is the light of the life. So how bright is the life, how luminous, how um, eminent, how visible how high is it right and so let's say for example we have a day chart with the sun in an air sign then we would have i hope i'm getting this right saturn as the first triplicity lord we would take a look at saturn that would be the first part of life let's say saturn is angular in its own sign whatever saturn would then indicate that the first part of life which i don't know if we're really going to get into the timing is going to be a bright eminent period Let's say the second ruler, which in this case, in a day chart, in an air sign would be Mercury, is declining and it's in Pisces, right? So that would be a weak triplicity lord indicating dimness, a lack of support for the brightness and eminence of the life. And so it indicated decline from a position of prominence, brightness, energy to a position of obscurity, lowliness, darkness, you know, all these kinds of things. Um. And so it doesn't always have to do with like good and bad, right? So like having a angular, um, which is the primary consideration, triplicity lord, doesn't always mean that it's like bright and good. Demetra actually gives kind of an interesting um, example of this where she says, um, if I can cut this part up. So she says on... Page uh, 1013 says the eminence of a person's social status was also used as the basis, basis for making other kinds of judgments. In the charts of ordinary clients, an astrologer might often determine the relative eminence of a nativity first, so using a technique like this, before making other prognostications. For example, if a person has great eminence as indicated by the triplicity lords and the marriage indicator is also strong and fortunate, the astrologer might predict a royal marriage to a prince, but if the triplicity lords indicate middling eminence, the prediction might be marriage to a prosperous businessman. With triplicity lords of low eminence, the prognostication could be a happy marriage to a laborer. In other words, the status conferred to an individual by the triplicity lords of the sect light has a global impact on the magnitude of judgments made for all the other topics. So just to kind of reiterate that, strong, angular, especially triplicity lords will give a life of higher prominence, perhaps higher status relative to where the person is born. And as you sort of decline through the angularity that the triplicity lord can possess, you get lower and lower statuses, but it doesn't mean bad outcomes in the same way. Yeah, so let's go through it piece by piece. First, you identify what sect of the chart is. You find the luminary and then you're going to look at a chart or you're going to have it memorized. Now, I think, doesn't Chris Brennan supply that chart on his mm -hmm. channel? 
So go and find that chart yeah. if you don't already have the chart, right? So you ha either have it memorized and then you have the chart and then you say, okay, it's in Virgo, Virgo, Earth. Then you look and you see, oh, that's Venus moon by day or moon Venus by night. Then you look at the two and then Venus with the day chart would be first, moon would be second. And then there's a cooperating Lord. In this example for Earth, it's Mars. So then you assess them, each ruler of the sect light. So in this case, Venus and the moon, You for the sun by day in Virgo, you would say, uh, is it angular? So these are kind of things that we're already taught. Is it angular? What is its dignity by sign? It's especially good if it's in another trigon place. So let's say you have Venus in Libra. That's really great for Venus. Perfect. It's good by sign. But even better if it's Taurus in this case, because it's dominating but it's being ruled by someone also in that triplicity mode. That's even better. That's great. And then you want to continue your evaluation through this set of operations. Next, we would have after the zodiacal sign exaltation, if it's in an, its own triplicity, then you would want to see if it has like a square or opposition. This was focused on most, so a malefic aspect from a malefic. So again, these are, we know how to do this by this time. And then, so a square or an opposition from a malefic. Then you want to compare the condition of the first Lord and the second Lord and say, which one is better, right? And if you want to get into timing, you could just say, okay, first part of life, second part of life, and then the cooperating ruler, right? But if you really wanted to get into timing, you do this with essential times, just for the curious out there. You do this by planetary essential times, and you'll figure out through a method when it flips, in this case, from Venus to the moon, when Venus hands over her power to the moon. In Hellenistic astrology, we don't divide it into three parts. We don't say first part Venus, second part moon, then Mars. We actually say Mars is always cooperating through the light. Demetra also notes here that there is some debate whether we say Venus always has her signification through the whole life and then the moon just starts to add a layer on top of Venus or if it absolutely hands over. She said that is up for, you know, uh, debate, discussion and our practice. So there's that. Just one point on that is that with this technique, angularity is kind of far and away the most important um, aspect because it is relying on this notion of support and like energy and um, activity rather than its um, zodiacal position alone. So it, like, it's nice to have a triple city Lord that's, you know, let's say exalted, but if it's exalted and declining, then that's probably worse than angular and not exalted. And you might just have like a, like a very exalted part of life but you're mm -hmm. fine doing it from a cadent position again yeah. someone you yeah. absolutely exalt and love but they are a you know working class person yeah. and you're not you never get famous nor do you want to but you just sort of exalt your sim simple life or something yeah. like that um still because it does have to do with well-being and happiness not everyone necessarily is going to get their well-being and happiness from fame. Let's say you have a cadent bad house, but it's in good positioning. Otherwise, you still might have a happy life. You just might not have fame and brilliance mm -hmm. and like perfect health your whole life or whatever. You, you have to take all those things into consideration. House. Dimitri also, also mentions um, this could be done by whole sign, but I think it was Dorotheus. Dorotheus? It was Dorotheus, yeah. That really stress angularity by but it was by like dynamic by yeah. yeah yeah but like more dynamic angularity yeah. so instead of just by house you're actually looking at the pivots yeah south. um and this is it's it's this is a confusing technique to talk about i have a whole video with examples about it where i get into that essential technique um if you want to read about it Ben Dykes talks about it in the intro to Dorotheus, um, his translation on, I think it's, I want to say it's like page 43 or 44. 
Um, I feel like we're making it sound way more confusing. It's it yeah, <laughs> I, I, it's it's really like actually a pretty simple technique once you memorize the triplicity lore. It's like it it becomes not that difficult. But um, yeah, it's basically what we're doing is we're saying how well supported is the sect light? What does the sect light do? The sect light determines how bright the life is going to be, how active, how energetic, how well recognized is the person going to be, um, etc. And also everyone mentions like monetary support or like friend support. It definitely has to do with just like how vital and how easy it yep. is for you to just maintain some kind of basic need. So I feel like in our world, it is really important to just see, it's not about necessarily rich and famous. It can show status, but it's just like, how happy are you going to be? And like how much, support and finances are you going to have how steady is that going to be yeah. like you know yeah so. and, and you know at least in Demetrius' book and in chris's book it's tied in a lot with a lot of fortune like as you said where if the triple city lords maybe aren't great you can look at a lot of fortune and if a lot of fortune is in decent to good condition it would be like the person is um encounters difficulties related to the triple city lords but through luck and circumstance they're able to um you know avoid some of the damage from that yeah and like again these are rulers of the nativity so of course it's going to be in conjunction with the lord of the ascendant and the lord of fortune like the last video we made so yeah. if you guys wanted to listen to these as like part one and part two these are all a part of the evaluation. So not all of them are going to be tip top all the time. We know that because most of us are not like rich and famous, right? So just take that into consideration. And it's all of them. And it's not just about fame. It's about like support and general relative happiness, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Um, so we were at, you look to see if there is a square or opposition. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you look to see the first and the second triplicity lord and how that will start to talk about the first and the second parts of life. And then we have the, this changeover of better or lesser circumstances um, through those periods of assessing the essential times if you wanted to get drilled down a little bit more on the timing. Um, and you want to note this is kind of her last point in the triplicity is like you really want to note the sect light the moon the aspects to the moon the aspects to the ascendant and how they're configured to one another mm -hmm. so they're talking back and forth again you she really stresses how the lords talk to one another who they can see can they see the lot of fortune can they see the lord of the ascendant all of those things are factored in to the assessment of the triplicity lords themselves um the last two lords that we talked about and their condition and if they can see the triplicity lords etc you might find that you have a planet that gets a lot of responsibility it's a triplicity lord, it's the lord of the ascendant, things like that. Then obviously the aspects to that and how it's talking with the rest of the chart, how it's communicating and how it's able to distribute its goods, that's going to be extra, have some extra emphasis mm -hmm. in the life. Mm -hmm. So I think that covers like the basics. We will write, write it in the description the lords and the cooperating lords by day and by night but again you can get that chart a lot of places like if you're reading along with us you can get it out of Demetrius' book you can get it out of brennan's book brennan has a printable handout i believe that he gives for free for the astrological community so that's really going to help once you've identified by day or by night uh which one which one which set with a cooperating ruler is your set yeah i i actually love this technique i i look at it in most charts um it's not always one that you need to really like bring to the surface in like let's say a reading but it's a good thing to have sort of in the back of your mind for the exact um 
reason that Demetrius said in that quote that I read earlier, where it's like, if the person has these like super eminent triplicity lords, you can then tailor all of the topics to fit within that, to be more eminent, more uh, right. One example that I like to give with all of that is Britney Spears. She had mm -hmm. all that fame from a young age, but she had a very shitty triplicity lord at first in her life. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that triplicity lord uh, in the fashion that Demetra highlights in the book, like that we should time things that Elsa has mentioned using essential times, uh, you get to the age where Britney Spears started rebelling against the system that held her captive within mm -hmm. her family. And uh, it culminated in her being released from that uh, particular situation uh, afterwards. But it, it's uh, it was a very debilitated Mercury, uh, giving it to a Saturn that's very angular and exalted. So it was a complete shift, like the ones that we were mentioning here, yeah. that happened to her. And this is my contribution to this episode, everyone. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's a, a really yeah. oh, wondering where I would come in. Right? I, I just came. <laughs> That's it. But um, you did a really great talk also for was it for a fan where you talked about Britney's life? Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. OK, cool. Yeah. So you can look at that. And if you yeah, if you want to see this again, I know we've mentioned it, but if you want to see this demonstrated matt has like a trip a triplicity lord breakdown as well as another video that has ch actual chart examples yeah. Yeah. so it, go ahead and watch that yeah and it makes a lot more this is one of the techniques that like there's a lot kind of going on in the background that it really helps to have um, a chart so well, another place you can find that is our study group and it's such a really broad technique and really important, obviously, because it's a master of the nativity technique and something that once you get it down, you're going to love it. You're going to use it a lot. It's literally like being able to identify the Lord of the Ascendant. Yeah. It's yeah, that it's, important. Yeah. It's almost that easy. And you definitely need to evaluate. You're going to see it very like you're like, oh, yeah, duh. Like when you look at it, kind of you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It speaks loudly. It speaks clearly. It's broad and it's useful. So come to study group if you want this Wednesday. And like we are going to be breaking it down with chart examples. Watch Matt's video on it. Grab yourself a chart. I would just suggest memorizing it. It's not that terribly difficult because they're kind of just switched by day and by night yeah. so yeah. that makes it pretty easy all right y'all so valens and dorothy's if you want more uh really great descriptions in both like all of the heady uh hellenistic books we're gonna go over chart examples matt's video has chart examples thank you all again for joining we're having a great time in this study group. Thank you to all of our Patreon members that make the study group so fun. Love you all. Thank you. And um, until next time, thank you, David and Matt, for being here. Thank and you. Peace. Ciao. Matta <laughs> <laughs>